Okay, we are still on uh, project time motion, and of course we have uh, discussed this before, and we said that the flight of the project time involves two motion, vertical motion and the horizontal motion. The motion along Y axis has to do with the vertical motion, while the motion along X axis has to do with the horizontal motion. Now, looking at this one first, later on we are going to handle the one that has to do with the horizontal motion. We want to look at the motion along Y axis. For motion along Y axis, U Y is equal U sine theta. Please take notes. Why the acceleration is simply minus g. Take note of this. Now, what now look at the time for this body to leave this position down to this position? That is time. And that one is the time of flight. As the object, the object hits the ground. Hits the ground. Hits the ground. Okay? The vertical displacement, the vertical displacement, the vertical displacement is zero. The vertical displacement, the thick roots, the vertical displacement is zero. Is zero. Take note of this. Of course, it simply means that y is equal to zero. I don't mean like by that. It simply means that y is equal to zero. Take notes. Is claiming that y is equal to as the body hits the ground, the vertical displacement is zero. Okay, it means that for this body to return to this plane of projection, it means that y will be zero. Okay, now we can now determine the time for this body to leave here to this position. And of course, I said that uh, that has to do with uh, it has to do with the time of flight. It has to do with the time of flight. Therefore, I can use the second equation of motion, which is uh, S, that is displacement for ut plus half a t squared. Okay? Now, remember that we are dealing with vertical displacement here, we call that equal ui t t plus half a y t squared. Now, we are dealing with time of flight. And that time of flight usually use capital letter T to represent time of flight. Okay, that is the time it will take to reach the plane of projection. Therefore, for this Y of Z, I thought to what we said earlier, as the project hits the ground, the vertical displacement is zero. Therefore, Y will be zero. And here, my U Y, look at it there, is U sine, we have U, U sine theta, U sine theta. We have T, this is our T there, the T we have here become capital letter T, that we will have there, capital letter T, plus half, and our AY, look at it, is minus G, therefore here become minus G, and we have T squared. Okay, now we can, this minus here can affect here, because zero equal U sine theta T, okay, minus half, minus half, g t squared. Now take this one over, we have half, we have half there, half g t squared equal u, this one is not limit, this one will move over, and this time we move over become plus, okay, this one become plus, okay, now this one become u sine sine theta, that is what we have there, u sine theta. Now we can, now, um, Multiply both sides by 2, multiply it by 2, multiply it by 2. If I multiply it by 2, I will have gt squared. Multiply it by 2, I will have 2u sine theta. Now I can divide both sides by g so that I can make t the subject of the formula. That is the time of flight. That is the one I'm looking for. If I will have t, I will have, okay, we still have t here. Please take note, we have t here. For God, we have t there. Look at it, we have T there. Please, we also have T here. Okay, I can say T can be P1 T here. Therefore, this one will be left with uh, GT. Please take notes. One of the T can, this T here can be one of the T here, here with GT. Okay, now for this one, now I can now, uh, I will understand where I got this one. I multiply both sides by 2, multiply here by 2 to GT, 
multiplied by 2 become 2 u sine theta. Now divide both sides by g so that I can meet the subject. I will have the 2 u sine theta all over g. Therefore, this one becomes the formula. This one becomes the formula for time of flight. If you take notes, this one becomes the formula for time of flight. This is the formula we use for time of flight. If you take note of this, that is the formula we use for time of flight. Okay, we can also determine the time for the body to leave the that they leave this very point here, this very point here to this very highest height. We can also determine the time for that one. And uh, we also use that same equation, which is the second equation of motion. We can also use it to determine that. Okay, to do that, it is very, very simple. Let us see it. I'll just give you a minute to go through this one so that I can clean the board so that I can resolve that very well. At the time it will take the body to get to the highest height. I'll just give you a few seconds to go through this very one I've done so that I can clean and determine that. Okay? Okay, to do that, okay, I think I can clean the board now. I can clean the board. Okay, one of the time in the time, if you take for this body to get to the maximum height, at highest point, you want to see at highest point, at highest, at highest point, at highest point, let us see what will happen. At highest point, this very point here, that you can see, you can see the body is at the top, is at the top. Don't forget that VY, look at this, at this position here, don't forget that VY is equal to zero. Take notes. Don't forget that VY is equal to zero. Let us see how we can use that to. Okay, can we also use the second equation? Can we also use the second equation? If I use the second equation, it will not work. If I use the second equation, it will not work. I use the second equation for the first one to determine the time of flight. But for the, this one, it will not work. Okay, I will use the first equation of motion to do this very one. Therefore, I will use v equal u, v equal u plus a t. I will use this very one here. Therefore, since we are dealing with v y, therefore we are dealing with vertical dimension along the y axis. I can see here is v y. V y. Remember, we are dealing with motion along y axis. I can see here is v y equal u. This one we call u y plus a y t. Okay, this one here, don't forget at highest point, at highest point, v y is equal zero. Therefore, this one becomes zero equal u sine so u y is u sine theta. Okay, for the a y we have it right here. We have a minus g t. Okay, I can make. Okay, this minus here can affect the plus. I will have here, which is 0 equal u sine theta minus gt. Take it over. This minus will change to plus. Therefore, I will have here, I'm going to have u. Sorry, I'm going to have gt equal u sine theta. This is what I have here. Mean that I can divide both sides by. G, therefore, I will have T equal U sine theta all over G. Therefore, this one will be the time for this very body to live here to this very point at this maximum uh, height. This maximum height. This is the highest height for this body before it can return to the plane of projection. Okay, for this one, this one is for the time for this body to get to this point. Do you know if I do you know that the time it takes for this body to get to this point? In the same time, it also take for this body to return to the plane of projection. Therefore, I cannot prove and see that. Remember, at this point, I said we have time of flight. Therefore, here is the time of flight. Mean that for this one, for this body to live here to this point, is equal t, and to return here again is also t. Therefore, t plus t equals it. I have. I'm going to have a 2t here, 
Therefore, I have t equal to t, and it's simply what? Look at t, the value for t, and it's simply what? U sine, for this t, look at t here, it's simply u sine theta all over g. I can also use this very one, this concept, to explain the time of flight. Take note. I can also use this very concept to explain the time of flight. It means that either you use this one for the time of flight, or you use the other one I determined before for the time of flight. I believe we have already uh, understand this one. Okay, the last part now is going to be the maximum height. Let us see how we can determine the maximum height. Now we just give a few seconds to go through so that we can determine the maximum height in this very uh, very part of uh, motion along y axis. Okay. Okay. Now we can claim. Okay. What do now determine the uh, maximum height? What do determine the maximum height? At maximum height, let us see. At maximum height. At maximum height, let us see what happens. At maximum height, at maximum height, okay, which is the h, by uh, using h to represent it, okay, vy is equals to Now, using the third equation of motion, is v squared equal u squared plus 2as, okay? Now, we can say here is v. This one can be v y squared, and this one will be u uh, y squared plus two right open brackets a y, and we have here as h. We have that point there as h. We turn into h because we are dealing with a vertical uh, displacement. We are dealing with vertical displacement. This is motion along paths. Okay, now let us see what will happen. In that uh, one, now we can now represent them. We already said that u y is zero. We already said that v y is equal zero. Let us see what happens. It means that here is going to be zero. Here is zero. Okay. Here will be u u sine uh, theta square plus this one uh, a lambda g. I will have uh, h here. Okay, now we can take this, okay, we can say is zero equal u square sine square theta sine square theta minus 2gh. Okay, take it over. When we take it over, we have a 2gh equal u square sine square theta. Okay, that is what we have there. Divide both sides by 2g. Therefore, we have h equal u square sine u square sine square theta all over 2g. Therefore, this one becomes the formula for maximum height. Mean that this one is the formula for maximum height. Please take note of that. That is the formula for maximum height. I think at this point I can stop. There is no other, we don't have other formula we can determine along this. Uh, very motion that is along these houses, that motion along the white houses. There is no other formula we can determine in this very one. I think at this point I can stop. My next class will be motion along the edge houses. The one we are just done now that we will determine the maximum height and the time for the body to leave this position to this position at the highest point here, and also the time it take to get the uh, uh, point of projection. This will have to do with the time of flight. Y here is the T, which is the time for you to get here. Now we are able to determine the formula for this very part. Now our next line of discussion will be motion along the uh, S houses. Thank you very much. Please don't forget to like my Facebook page, the Bijobo Online Mathematics, and also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Mathematics Science Mega Tutorial. All the best.